setting it up. There's his three. It is good! Ford asking for another three. He got it. He called for it. He called for it. Here's the throw to Gant. Rejected by Williams! For us to uh, win the Pac-10 championship, cut down the nets, I can't imagine it being any better anywhere. Hi there. Thanks for spending some time with us. He is Dave Cooney. I'm Damian Alameda, and you are watching Arizona Basketball The Return because, let's face it, that is exactly what Sean Miller and the men have done. Yeah, you know, after one season away from the big dance, after five years away from the top of the conference, Arizona has indeed returned back to where Wildcat Nation is kind of used to seeing them. And as the team prepares to face Memphis Friday in the NCAA tournament, I can't think of anyone more qualified to recap the highs and lows of the 2010-2011 season than the man who's led the way. As we've gone through our conditioning program, our skill workouts, and now our team workouts preparing for our first practice, that leads me into saying that we're in a much better place than we were a year ago. No magic potion here. Derek Williams was by far the best player on the court. Indicator for BYU's success. Fred right from the baseline. We don't have a lot of guys who've had great success away from home. We've had many guys who've taken some unbelievable ass whoopings in big, big moments. Kind of like deja vu from Thursday, we're not a mature, responsible team. That's why we all came to Arizona, to be a part of something special like this. Next year. They're tearing apart Arizona right now. That's to credit USC and UCLA. We got what we deserved. When you have this feeling, it's so much easier to work hard from this point on because as in a sport, there's no better feeling than winning a championship. Shake, crossover, step back. For us, I think it'll be easy for us to, to leave this game and move towards something bigger and special like the tournament. Returning to this tournament a year later as a five seed, I'm so proud of our team and and proud of our players. I can't even begin to describe it. All right, so now the Cats are off to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Arizona set to play a team led by one of their own. I'm talking about Josh Pastner. Hey, it wasn't too long ago the Pastner was roaming along the sidelines inside of McHale. For six seasons, he was a trusted assistant under Coach Lute Olson, the same man he played for during the 97 National Championship run. After Coach Olson's retirement, some and Wildcat Nation even believed Pastner would be a good fit to take over as head coach. But alas, it would be Memphis calling first. But now that he's facing Arizona for the first time as an opposing head coach, will there be any love lost? I think that's cool. I mean, that's, that's neat. Um, uh, you know, let me just say this. I mean, Arizona, um, obviously, that's my alma mater, but I bleed blue and gray. So that's, that's the bottom line. So it's the fifth seed Arizona taking on the 12th seed Memphis on Friday. Will Josh Pastner be able to overcome Sean Miller and Derek Williams? We'll have to wait and see. Joining me now, Anthony Germino, our good friend from TucsonCitizen.com to talk some Arizona Wildcat Memphis Tiger first round action. Biggest question here, Memphis pops up underneath Arizona's name. What was your reaction? My reaction was probably just like yours, where I couldn't tweet it fast enough to say what a, I mean, what a great matchup. Everybody's first reaction is, hey, that selection committee kind of has a sense of humor. But Pastner coming back, playing Arizona, um, everybody here loves him. He had a, he had a really nice run here. Um, I found a really old picture from 1997 when he was part of that national championship team. He's celebrating on the bench, jumping up in the air, and his vertical's like about this big. So we're going to have a good time with Josh this week. It's going to fill uh, a couple days of stories for us for sure. You know, this season for Josh hasn't exactly been the easiest season for him or his team. Uh, quite a little bit of a roller coaster ride uh, for them to get into the tournament the way they did by beating UTEP on UTEP's floor in the Don Haskins Center for the conference championship. Um, you know, it's almost fitting, isn't it? They're very young, and that you know explains most of their inconsistency. They start for freshmen play five routinely, uh, 
So they're they're a little bit like Arizona last year, um, and the, they're not unlike Arizona's team this this year. They're not supersized, um, very young, inexperienced. You know, all that great Memphis team from two three years ago. Those guys are pretty much gone. Um, so yeah, up and down, but the future is looking very bright. In terms, we know Josh Pastner can recruit highly rated kids. He has two McDonald's All-Americans on this team. He's got another highly touted guy coming in next year. Just a one-man class so far because he's, he's only losing one senior. All right, let's talk some Arizona Wildcat basketball. I mean, uh, not enough can be said, I would think, about the job that Sean Miller has done in just his short time. I think the, the story of the season was, is going to be, hey, this was a great year. This was a great year. Doesn't matter how it ended. Um, they have 27 wins right now. Schedule's not maybe Arizona good kind of schedule, but regular season Pac-10 title, having an All-American, bringing in a top five recruiting class, filling McHale, bringing in some new traditions like the whiteout uh, and things like that. All those are great, great things. And the stuff you wouldn't have expected in his, in his second year. Maybe his third year, maybe his fourth year. But to do it and to have that arrow of, of progress pointing up is, is the most important thing. I think that's the, the encouraging thing where I don't think I've ever had one second of doubt of, that the program was in really good hands. No matter the wins and losses, that he was the right guy at the right time. We talk about the Memphis Tigers youth. Arizona Wildcats aren't exactly much older, are they? They're not, and that's the, the, one, the one kind of team you didn't want them to, to run up against in, in the tournament was an experienced team that was physical. Memphis is really neither of those. They're certainly not experienced. They're, they're actually younger than Arizona. They have a couple of bigs. They can go big if they absolutely have to, but they're not physical like USC. They're not really physical with the, the big guys like UCLA has. So I don't think Memphis can really attack Arizona's weaknesses. So in that sense, I think it's a pretty good matchup. Now, not to say Memphis isn't talented, because they do have a bunch of raw talent and some very athletic guys who can attack the basket. But in terms of the kind of team you didn't want to see, Memphis is not that team. At the end of the day, what's your pick? Oh, I like Arizona. For some of the, re for some of the matchup reasons we talked about, uh, that, that I don't think Memphis can really exploit the problems, uh, some weaknesses Arizona has. So I think Arizona probably wins. They don't, Arizona doesn't blow teams out. We know that. But I think it's maybe a five, six, seven point victory in the first round. And then could be Texas in the second round. Could and be. I, and I think that's a really tough matchup. I know some people are down on Texas because they didn't finish particularly well. But that, that team could really get after it, after it defensively. And I could see them giving Arizona a bunch of problems. Let's not forget, Texas was at one point the number one team in the nation for a reason. He is Anthony Jamino from TucsonCitizen.com. Anthony, as always, appreciates the insight. Dave, take it away. Yeah, that's right, D. Thanks. And uh, did you know Derek Williams grew six inches in his freshman year of high school? That's the kind of trivia you're going to learn when we take a visit to D. Wield's old stomping grounds of La Mirada High School coming up later. Coming up next, my own exclusive, my one-on-one -on -one interview with Coach Lou Olson and how he expects these Wildcats to finish out. And welcome back to the Arizona Basketball Special, The Return. I'm Dave Cooney. You know, for more than a quarter century, there was only one name, one coach attached to the Arizona program. And Lute Olson is still at every Wildcat game, but now he's got a little different perspective on what happens on the court. It was a Monday in March when I sat down with Coach O at his house. Now, remember, I just said a Monday in March, usually a day reserved for breaking down some game film, practice, reviewing your opponents. But for the past two years, he has a much newer role and a new seat at Wildcat Games, one that he's still adjusting to. You know, I have people say, well, I'm, I'm sure you're happy you're up here rather than down there. And, and I said, the interesting thing is when you're coaching, you're so busy with the adjustments and everything that you don't get nervous. And when you're sitting up in the stands, I'm like any other fan that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more tense up there than I ever was on the court. And since he left coaching, there's still some critics out there that believe Olsen set the program back a few years when he took his leave of absence in 07 and then announcing a sudden retirement in 08. I know what 
I know what to put it back. I, uh, I suffered a, a minor stroke, and, and uh, my doctor just the said that he felt that I, and, and I should not continue, that it would be a definite health risk. You know, for anyone to say that after we had put that many teams in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament and we had 20 consecutive wins for, what, uh, 20 years or more, uh, you know, th those kinds of fans would really irritate me. If, mm -hmm. if they have something to say to me, say it. Guys going pro in your program, nothing new. Now, there's a gentleman right now, Derek Williams, who's going to have a major decision to have to answer at the end of this year. And what was your advice to guys like that? <clears throat> My feeling was I wasn't ever going to tell a kid to stay, uh, nor was I going to tell him to go. Uh, I was just going to get the facts there in front of them that were in, in truth facts mm -hmm. uh, and, and then let him make the decision. I think it's going to be difficult for Derek to turn down the opportunity. And I think when you're talking about the kind of money that that's, uh, is given out when you're in that situation, it's, it's pretty hard to turn down. It's a lot easier to get your degree after you've got $35 million in the bank. Uh, I always remember this. We were in your backyard and I said, you know, talking about a Final Four team, you said to have a Final Four team, you got to be one extremely talented, but you got to be lucky. <laughs> what do you see in this year's Arizona team? Is that a combination? I guess how far do you think they could go? Just well, it, it is true what you said that, that, you know, you have to be really good to get to the Final Four, but you also have to be very lucky. I think Sean has done an unbelievable job of bringing this team along. Uh, the way I look at it right now, very frankly, is if they get to the Sweet 16, I, I think that's, that's a heck of an accomplishment. If you come out with Arizona across your chest, you are a target for, for anyone. That's right. Now, when we come back, Damian Alameda hits the Wildcat weight room. That's right. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Arizona Basketball, The Return. I'm Damian Alameda. Now, it takes a lot of work to stay in shape for a 33-game regular season, and to do it means just the right combo of cardio and strength work. Well, enter Chris Rounds, a gentleman as crucial to the Cats' success as Sean Miller. This year, under his guidance, the team opened up a brand new 2,000 square foot weight and cardio facility in the Richard Jefferson Gymnasium. So, who better to give us the tour than Chris himself? Hi, my name is Chris Rounds. I'm the strength and conditioning coach for Arizona basketball. We put this weight room together with the gift from Cole and Jeannie uh, Davis, um, specifically for the basketball program. Uh, the equipment we have is very uh, specialized to the type of philosophy we use for our strength program. Downstairs, there's four woodway treadmills, there's 12 SciFit bikes, and three step mills from Stairmaster. The, the woodway treadmills that we have are about three feet longer than an average tre treadmill. They're also seven inches wider. Um, it, it enables guys like Kirill Nadiasko when he, when he runs on there to actually have a normal stride length. All our machines and equipment are made for, you know, people over 6'5", and, uh, you know, it's, it's really good on our knees. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great for us right now. In season, we're lifting twice a week. Um, it takes about 25 minutes. Um, they're doing full body workouts right now. Uh, once we go to the off season, they'll do a four day a week split, which is upper one day, lower the next day. Um, and that takes roughly 30 to 35 minutes a day. Most of the time, the guys aren't able to handle what we do when they first arrive on campus. Um, that they'll just end up throwing up or passing out the first few times they go through. He's one of those coaches that's going to push us to the limit. You know, um, a lot of coaches just let you come here and do whatever. But, you know, he watches you, you know, um, and he pushes you to that max, max limit to get you stronger every day. You know, we, we tested our body composition stuff at the end of our preseason, which was uh, in the middle of October. And of the 15 guys on our roster, they'd gained 173 pounds of muscle collectively and lost 130 pounds of fat. And they still have a long way to go. So from a strength and conditioning perspective, your job's never really done. You always have something you're trying to improve. We have so much more yet to come. Wildcat guard Dondre Y shows us around the Wildcats new penthouse er locker room. Plus up next, Derek Williams High School coach tells us how D. Will went from a six foot freshman with large feet to the dominating star he is today, all when we return. Welcome back, I'm Dave Cooney. Now, if you've taken a peek at any recent mock draft board, you're gonna see a very familiar name at the top of that list, Derek Williams. His rise to lottery pick status, I mean, it's a good one. 
He opted to stay at a small high school in California to play alongside his childhood friends. Now, at the time, he wasn't a top 50 recruit, but you know, some of those people at La Mirada High School may have seen all this coming. Freshman year, I was six foot. Then the freshman year, I was six six. <laughs> so, you know, I went through a lot of changes right there. And then, you know, sophomore year, I didn't, didn't start on the varsity team. In 12th grade year, where, you know, I took my school to uh, you know, the Division II semifinals, you know, far as we've ever been. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the last ball. About a half hour outside of Los Angeles, I stopped here at La Mirada High School, where I found the same number on Derek Williams' jersey, but the colors, they were different. <laughs> Former assistant at La Mirada High School and now their head coach, Steve Schuster, now watches Williams on a much bigger stage. But he says not a whole lot has changed since high school. Some of the dunks that we've seen on ESPN in top 10 plays, we saw him do in a, a tournament in Florida. He dunked on a kid that the place went nuts and multiple times in practice he would dunk on guys and guys would would leave the gym because they felt bad how bad he just dunked on them. You know, just growing up with my high school teammates, you know, ever since I was younger. I play with the same people. My mom, you know, my mom said, if you're good enough, they'll come find you. It's dirty, right? We showed you the Wildcat basketball team's brand new weight and cardio facility earlier, but those upgrades pale in comparison to the new locker room turned luxury suite. And if you think I'm exaggerating, wait till you see it. Arizona guard Dondre Wise welcomes us in. Andre Wise, a junior guard. The new coaching staff came in. They said that our locker room wasn't up to par with the rest of the teams around the country. So getting something like this, you know, it gives us a chance to get better recruits to come in once they see other locker rooms and compare it to ours. You know, right here, here's the trophy case with the national championship trophy and all of our Pac-10 trophies. You know, we're getting another one real soon. So that'd be real nice for us to get one of our own. Here's the nice little A that we have, you know, it's a real good look. It gives the locker room, you know, a better feeling. And right here we have the lounge chairs with the U of A basketball on it. You know, they're real nice, real comfortable. We watch film in this, we sit and watch TV. And over here we have the three different TVs. They all have their own satellite, so you can, you know, watch whatever you want to watch. Not everybody wants to watch the same thing, so it's good to have three different TVs. We got nice little cubbies. The nice part about this is we have, if you look in here, we have outlets. In the old locker room, it was mayhem trying to find an outlet, so it's nice for everybody to have their own so you don't have to fight over an outlet. Uh, right here is this shoe drawer, and you know, these are my special U of A Kobe's that I just got. You know, everybody on the team wants those, but I'm the only one with those. And, you know, I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. Before every game, Coach Miller comes to this sink right here and he wets his hair. And we have a little motion sensor. And then he wets his hair and he slicks it back. So when y'all watch games and you see his hair slick back and it doesn't move from this area right here. Now I was in shock, you know. It's, it looks kind of like a hotel in here and our old locker room was just kind of run down after all the wear and tear. So this is pretty nice. We are now in the home stretch of our special. Up next, Dave and I wrap this whole thing up. Stay right there. All right, welcome back. Decision time, my favorite part. Arizona opens up as the five point favorite over Memphis. I've never been shy to pick against Arizona. I did last week and <laughs> I might have been wrong, but I'll take Arizona this time over Memphis. I'm gonna take Arizona over Memphis as well. Game time, approximately 1145, right here on KOLD News 13 CBS. Watch it right here on Friday morning. Folks, thanks for spending some time with us. Have a great night.